Spoilers! Spoilers and offensive content to come. Oh, shit. <laughs> we are Two Fat Guys Talk, the podcast of podcasts of podcasting. This is episode 105, I think. I don't actually know. I'll figure it out later. I don't really want to get up right now. Just very... Just in the corner of this couch. I'm just really sleepy. Kind of... Kind of feeling the burn of having done nothing all day and... <laughs> Kind of need to sleep a little bit. And then Dave's like, no, man, we got to talk about things. And I'm like, okay, let's talk about things. Dave, how you doing? Oh, by the way, you're Dave and I'm Carlos. Hi. <laughs> this is our podcast. So we, have, we, are, we, are, we have tens of fans. So many fans. And man. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> we have Like, seriously. Doing this for years. And we have nothing to show for it. <laughs> Let's keep it going for another bunch of years. Why not? Yeah. Sweet. For, how about for every podcast we've done, we have to do at least one year of anime rave. Okay, so... Okay, fine. So you, so you're on the hook all... for another hundred odd years. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess so. I mean... It's already a lifetime commitment, but okay, whatever the hell that deal was supposed to be. All right, let's let's uh, let's get right down to it. We're going to begin by talking about a little game called Diablo Immortal. Uh, now, let, let's start with BlizzCon. This past weekend was BlizzCon 2018. The thing where Blizzard announces things and whatnot. There was uh, going to be a big Diablo announcement because... Blizzard currently has several Diablo projects in the works, and we were going to hear about one of them. Um, new stuff about World of Warcraft, Overwatch, and all that stuff. But the big story that's come out of it is Diablo Immortal. Now, imagine it's the big BlizzCon stage, and they're like, they get to the Diablo announcement, and it's been years since the Necromancer pack and the, and the last big Diablo expansion, and... You're like, okay, this is either going to be a Diablo 3 expansion, or it's going to be like a Diablo 2 remake, or it's going to be Diablo 4. All right, lay it on me. And Blizzard's like, new mobile game developed by a Chinese developer NetEase, Diablo Immortal. An action RPB, R RPB, RPG built for mobile phones. And the crowd went mild. And um, a lot of anger has been uh, aimed at Diablo Immortal. But before we talk about the anger, the backlash, and how much of it or how little of it was warranted, and no, we're not going to be... Uh, we're going to present a well-balanced take on this uh, in case anyone was counting on us to just jump all over, uh, all on the Blizzard hate, hate bandwagon. We're not. But Dave, what did you think of Diablo Immortal when you saw it? Eh? Like, here's the thing. I already don't use my mobile phone for gaming as it is. Which is a lie. I have... I'll admit, I have a couple of time wasters which are point-and-click things, but... So you... And they are games, yes. So you play mobile games. But I limit my time on them. And I'm not playing anything, you know, live-action-y. It's literally click here do this job kind of things. Got they're they're called gotcha games. For a variety of reasons. Sure. So yeah, I, everything this year like Blizzard already didn't have a BlizzCon last year. Because in their words, they didn't have enough to actually warrant a show for a full weekend. After seeing what they came up with with this this year, they should have kept it, took another year break. That was my impression of, of BlizzCon as a whole. I mean, I think the only thing I mildly had any interest in was their rather impressive cinematic trailer for some more of the current WoW expansion stuff. And I'm not even playing the current WoW expansion, so... Well, we'll get to the rest of the BlizzCon stuff for sure. You want to focus hard on, on Diablo Immortal? Uh, at, at first, at first. Because okay. I think that's the big story out of it. And, and it, it, it kind of is. And look, I think a great deal of the anger right now 
yes, part of it is you're a PC company and you're releasing a mobile game. I kind of get a little bit of the frustration there. Anger, no. Frustration, yes. Also, this isn't even being internally developed by Blizz. Yes, well, the, 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 this was outsourced to a third-party company that's known not for its good games, but for its game-breaking microtransactions. I actually looked up the company. Netties. Netties, yeah. I mean, they are a mobile-heavy company. That's what mobile is, really. It, well, but, and but that, that's more just and like, more, it doesn't have to be. More and more AAA games do it too, Forza. You'll have e- to e- e- EA. Uh, uh, B- Battlefield. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I, 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 for, I'm thinking mobile still here. Yeah, sorry. Um, for the microtransactions. So, the fact that they're... Honestly, this Diablo Immortal was their big reveal for BlizzCon. And it's not even an internally developed title. It's a third-party... Here's a little bit of a script. Go fuck off and make us money. That's honestly where I think the anger should be coming from. My initial impressions of Diablo Immortal were, wow, this is fucking garbage. Mm. And I texted you this. Yeah. As, as you might you recall. Because I don't think you were watching Bliss, no. BlizzCon actively. I was. I had it in the background while I was uh, doing some freelance work. And uh, since then, my position has become that it visually it looks fine. Mechanically, it looks like trash. It, I'm sure it plays like trash, but the outrage over it is getting out of hand. Because I think the real issue is twofold. The real issue, the what I call valid issues for Diablo Mortal is that... Really? This is your big Diablo announcement for BlizzCon? Not even a teaser for the next Diablo project, which are in the works? Mm-hmm. Fucking... Nintendo, two years ago, put out just a Metroid Prime 4 teaser, and that was enough. Just a fucking logo, Diablo 4, would have quelled a lot. And the other thing is that, uh, like, ultimately, it's, it's it's a mobile, it's an action mobile game, and I've never been a fan of those, because I don't feel the mobile platform does that well with touch controls. There are some mobile games I've enjoyed, even RPGs, turn-based ones. Mm -hmm. I think turn-based RPGs have a real home on mobile and that they haven't been touched and they haven't been done enough. Like, some of the Square ones are good. Some of them need work. V is my example. I think V, which was an old Sega CD RPG that was translated over to iPhone and then other mobile devices, super good mobile interface, super easy to play on mobile. Um... If it this had been like a turn-based Diablo thing with uh, and and it was a truly different game like maybe something akin to like a dark comic book with with nifty hand-drawn art and it was like an adventure a turn-based game for mobile maybe that would have been a little more interesting but what we got instead was something that looks kind of like a watered down D3 on mobile which is where it's going to control like garbage uh, and I think that's a valid issue to go, nah, these games suck on mobile, and the fact that this was the Diablo announcement sucks. Fuck that. Those are, I think, valid reasons. What I think are invalid reasons, sorry, I'll finish up real quick, is, wah, 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 I can't play this on PC, PC Gamer Master Race. Fuck everyone who has that as their complaint. I need to counter that la- that last part. Now, yes, the whole PC Master Race stuff... People can be irrational and everything else. <laughs> Extraordinarily irrational. Yes. I'm not going to go there because I think that's stupid. Sure. Even though I will wink and nod at it for you know some graphical stuff and everything else in some games I like to be able to improve. Uh, 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 that's not... I have zero issue if you're a PC gamer or if you prefer PCs. I have a huge issue if you're one of those PC master race fucktards who think that PC gaming is the only way to play and that any other type of gaming is dumbed down. Well, and you know I'm not like that, because I, I own know. every... I know I know you know, <laughs> for our audience... Right, you're right, you're right, you're I right. I own every console on the market. There are co- there are console <laughs> games you destroy me at. And, uh, uh, like, I mean, yeah, you're not that guy. But you're not that guy, but let, they exist. Let me, let me answer the frustration there. 
for it, though. Sure. When you look at Blizzard, Blizzard is a PC company, first and foremost, that has branched out into the console market. But not only is this a mobile-only game, which, imagine you're one of the major Blizzard fans and you have bought either yeah you shoot yourself <laughs> in the head i i get it and you have bought either the blizzcon online ticket or you're actually there in person knowing that there really hasn't been other than a couple like nes games that have not come to pc first and that you know, is their primary development site um, system. And now you're being told about a Diablo game, which is going to require a mobile phone to play, and it's not even being made by Blizzard. That's, for a, P a PC Blizzard fan, that strikes one, two, and three right there. I mean, are you trying to say, Blizz, that my PC can't run it? Because you and I fucking know it can. But, oh, right, you're not even doing it internally. Now, I've spent hundreds of dollars to come to your fucking event. Or spent hundreds of fucking dollars to watch it online. And this is what you're giving me for Diablo? You're right. Flash a fucking Diablo 4 symbol up. Say it's in, in fucking development. And you're good. But this was your goddamn highlight of your event. A mobile game you're not even making. That, while it looks pretty, I agree with you, probably controls like absolute shit. Though I can argue there have been a couple of um, action games that have worked great on mobile. Um, the World Ends With You port from the, the DS worked fantastic on iPhone and Android. But the times they get it right are so insignificant, it's probably going to suck for controls. I think if Diablo 4 had been announced and it was like a Switch exclusive, I think you still would have gotten a lot of the PC Master Race hate, even though, in my opinion, in that hypothetical scenario, I would have had no... No, gri no gripes with that whatsoever. Because while I completely agree that it's not a Blizzard in-house thing, and it's a mobile game, which is not really well suited to this type of game, that platform, at BlizzCon, of all things, mm -hmm. the part where it's like... I don't think every new Blizzard game has to be on PC. I don't think it's insulting to fans at all that they put games on a different platform. This is what game companies do. Exclusivity is a thing. And sometimes they decide, you know what? We want games to be on this console, no ands, ifs, or buts. That's where it's going to live. Mm -hmm. And I get that. Um, and if Diablo 4 had been announced that it was like a Switch exclusive, I think you still would have gotten a lot of the vitriolic and, quite frankly, unfounded hate that has been flung Blizzard's way by a lot of the PC Master Race types. If it had been a Switch exclusive, I think they would have burned down the hall. <laughs> sure, maybe, but they would be in the wrong. Oh, um, they still are. I think, ultimately, the problem isn't that it's exclusive to a platform. The problem is that that platform is not really great with that type of game, and that this game is not really a flagship. It's kind of this in-between thing made by a company that's looking to do microtransactions that looks like a watered-down version of a game that we've been waiting for in another expansion for. That's it, the, that's really what I think is the issue. But that's kind of what I said. Just no, 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 it is, it is. And, and, and here's the thing. Yes, your fan bases are toxic. We both know this in, mm -hmm. in almost any fan base. Yep. So, I understand the, the frustrations on that. But it's the frustrations of, you know, a decent amount of the fan base. I'm not talking like the morons that are, you know, we need to burn down Blizzard because they're doing this kind of, kind of shit. The, the fanatics. But 
No, the, the even for the the fact that it's on a a different different system. If it had been on Switch for for this mobile game port, I don't think there would have been anywhere near as much. There still would have been some because there always is. But if it had been PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch, you probably would have had less than half of what we currently got. Oh, uh, you would have had way more than half. I don't think so. PC gamers are fucking nuts. Like the hardcore, the yes. hardcore master race types. <laughs> these are people who have never really had. Like these are people who are. PC gaming is way more expensive than console gaming. It always has been. Mm-hmm. It's just the, the nature of it. And what that means is not all PC gamers are like this, but a bunch of them are people who have never wanted for money ever. So they don't understand things like not everyone can a fucking afford the kind of gaming PC you'd need to compete with just buying a console. Mm-hmm. Um, so what this leads is to a fan base that is very entitled. And there is nothing worse than an entitled fan base being angry that an audience other than theirs is getting some love from a developer they think owes them something. It's like there was a video online that I commented on. Some fucking guy who makes a bunch of clickbait YouTube videos posted about how Blizzard was taking down comments from their YouTube channel that was that were crapping on Diablo Immortal. And I commented on it saying, hey, man, that's their channel. They're allowed to do that. It's not shady. And, of course, I got the, a bunch of fuckwits <laughs> coming back being like, oh, well, no, that's disingenuous. You should want to hear opinions. And I'd be like, uh, no, actually, if my channel, my rules, their channel, their rules, they don't want to see the dislikes there. They don't fucking have to. And that's the thing. PC gamers are not entitled to a new Blizzard game. Blizzard can make a game for whatever fucking audience they want, including if they are literally just targeting mobile users. They're allowed to do that. They are absolutely allowed to do that. The And for as shitty as Diablo Immortal looks, as much as I wish that wasn't the big announcement, what's worse than that is the reaction of the fan base. That's why I kind of softened my tone, because that fan base is trash. Hardcore Blizzard fans are trash. I can tell you that absolutely. I play. I play WoW. I can tell you a little bit about hardcore Blizzard fans. I play WoW and Hearthstone. Oh, I know them. But still, that reaction was awful. I th- I think the hardcore ones, yes, but I understand the frustration. Oh sure, me too. Me too. Because Diablo Mortal looks like a shitty game. It looks like garbage. I am still kind of upset that we got nothing else other than Diablo Immortal for Diablo. But, it is what it is. Like BlizzCon this year, seeing what came out, yeah, they should have skipped another year. While we're on the topic of Diablo, Kotaku was reporting that apparently Diablo 4 was going to be announced, but relatively recently, Blizzard decided not to because they did not have a demo or feel it was ready to show. We talked about it, about how we thought they could have even just put a little splash of the logo, and that would have been enough. But Blizzard, if nothing else, for better or worse, Blizzard sticks to their guns when it comes to what they feel is ready to show. Now, what do you think of that? They didn't have a demo ready, and they didn't want to just show a splash screen. Do you think that was the right move? No. And and again, this comes from my dislike of Immortal, granted, but... The time they put in to do a presentation for Immortal, they probably should have put in to doing a 10-second teaser video like Blizzard does. Splash Diablo 4 on it, or whatever the title is going to be, and say, coming when ready. Sure. If they had done something like that in addition to Immortal... Probably wouldn't be having all the outrage, but but again, if if I'd have paid to go to or watch Bl- BlizzCon this year, I'd be pissed. I I should note that again. This is a Kotaku report, and Kotaku's reliability is uh, non-existent. But I've seen this corroborated by people. I a believe. number of different sites have run it. Yeah, I've I've seen enough to make me mm-hmm. believe that D four was going to be announced. 
and that uh, they they're just Blizzard themselves saying they have several Diablo projects. You don't have several Diablo projects, and the next numbered Diablo is not one of them, right? So I mean, I, I completely believe that was the case. It just timing is is is, is garbage and. I feel for the developers, even though they said some real garbage things like, don't y'all have phones? That's really dismissive. It is. And I don't think that's the right thing to tell don't, people. Don't y'all have internet connections? Yeah, exactly. Xbox, Xbox did it. Yeah. Um, that's very dismissive and very entitled because no, not everyone has a modern phone. For any number of reasons, people might not be able to afford that. And you might ask, well, they can afford to go to BlizzCon. You don't know if that's just someone's savings and they desperately needed a vacation. Like, and that vacation was to go see BlizzCon so they could take their mind off their lives. And somebody may not want a freaking modern phone. A yeah. number of people still buy the the old style phone is for a phone kind of thing. You can yeah. do basic text, text messaging and make phone calls. Not everybody wants a multimedia computer as their phone. Yeah, and uh, it, that's the thing. That is an extremely entitled thing to say. That's as entitled as the PC gamers I was just deriding for a developer to say that. That is mm -hmm. extremely entitled. Uh, I guess we can talk about other things that were BlizzCon if you want. Is there anything you care to talk about? Cause... Warcraft 3 Reforged? Okay, no. That, that, get heated about Diablo and, and forget some of the good things that came out of <laughs> So, yeah, Reforged. I will play Reforged. I, I like the fact that it's going to be very similar to the game that I played all the, that many years ago, but look better. And I think this is actually kind of brilliant on Blizz's part that they're tweaking the story to match what ended up happening later in World of Warcraft. They're doing more than that. They're changing geometry of some places, like yep. moving the Stratholme entrance. I didn't know this, and I told you about this earlier. I didn't realize WoW was built on the Warcraft 3 engine, mm -hmm. and that it was fucking... that this engine has gotten so much mileage. But it's smart. They literally can plug in all the improvements they made to that engine back to Warcraft 3. Polish it up, and it's not... They don't have to port as much as, as you might think. A lot of the old code is still running it. So, I mean, it looks good. I, I'm not RTS guy. I suck at them. But Warcraft 3 at the time is something I kind of wanted to play and didn't have a PC that was good enough for it at the time. I think I'd like to play Reforged. Just, just, just for the campaign, really. I also... I'm impressed that... Blizz is using the same launcher as Warcraft 3 itself mm -hmm. on the on the Blizz launcher. Mm -hmm. So that if you have old Warcraft 3 or Reforged, you can play multiplayer between the versions. Yeah, apparently custom maps are all supposed to work in yep. the new version, which is amazing. To me. Which makes sense because they'll both have the same balance patches. So they're not adding units. They're just balancing and changing things around. So... Maps won't get broken by the new stuff. It's it. I like what Blizz is doing that, or how Blizz is doing that. It also tells me that Blizz, if this does well enough, could do more strategy games based around maybe even the, what's happened in World of Warcraft. Yeah, it'd be nice if some of the extra it's a Warcraft Three Reforged expansion took you on iconic battles for a while, like you just said. What if you... I'd love to see a, a real-time strategy take on what the fuck a Draenei unit is. What the fuck a, a Void Elf unit is. A Worgen unit. Like, <laughs> like maybe we can have some of the iconic battles that happened in Legion, but in Warcraft 3 maps, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be kind of neat and thematic, considering Warcraft 3 was about... Well, the first half of it was about foiling the Legion, and the second half about Arthas going really evil. <laughs> mm, you got that switched around, actually. No, the first half was Foyne the Legion, and then the expansion was the Frozen Throne, where we saw what Arthas went through after Jaina separated and went to go save the World Tree. How am I remembering this better than you, Dave? Well, no. Warcraft, Cause, cause, 3, Warcraft 3, Tides of Darkness. No. And Final Battle, Archimond, World yeah. Tree. Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne, the expansion... Arthas goes to Northrend. 
Like, they probably canonically happened at the same time, but one was released after the other. Okay, Dave's going to go Google this, so what you're not going to hear is the dead air I'm going to cut out as Dave finds out how wrong he is. Well, I take a glug of my tall bottle of Pepsi. It, it's, it's actually funny. I remember that the Frozen Throne, I must have just played it together. Um, cause I remember it more for, um, Maeve than I do for Arthas. <laughs> My Eve. But it's okay, Dave. But, I forgive you for pronouncing this name wrong that you should know uh, better than I do. Cause the, there, there's so many different, um, battles you could easily do in a Warcraft 3 style. Yeah. Then, then again, I do love how World of Warcraft did that final battle against, um, Archimond. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Caverns of Time version. Yeah, that was actually really neat because I remember that final battle in, in for that part of the game in Warcraft Three was a bitch to do because it was it, no matter how you played it, that battle was going to take one hour. Meanwhile, over in Final Fantasy Twelve Land. The twelfth hour fighting the optional super boss. Gamers who have been conned into thinking Final Fantasy XII is a good game are literally dying. <laughs> Twelve was such garbage. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Then again, so was thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong, Dave. Fourteen's uh, pretty good. Yeah, 14's pretty good. 15, pretty good as well. Um, 13, 2. Probably the best of the, of the 13's. No. No, no. That, that's objectively wrong. Lightning Returns is far better than the other two. No. No, no, I'm right. No, no, no you're, you're correct. completely wrong. It actually has movement and strategy and uh, was actually something that And a really could... shitty time system that killed all fun to the game oh yeah i know you and time systems uh, it's difficult to keep track of of time for you because you just want to what was i gonna say yeah what were you going to say dipshit? <laughs> you just want to kill all the other races i i think unfortunately for lightning returns because it had a similar time system to the um freaking Zombie game that Capcom keeps on whoring out. Dead Rising. Dead Rising. I I become so tired of it by then. I just couldn't get into into Lightning Returns. Because Dave wants to take his time. I do he wants like to, to take enjoy my time the game. Um. No, I, I was gonna say I think thirteen two is probably the the better of the three, because I couldn't get into, into Lightning Returns. But it also reminds me of how I'd like to do a. Chrono Trigger sequel ignoring Chrono Cross. Because I... I don't even think it's actually 13.2 that I actually like. I like what 13.2 did with the whole time-changing dimension hopping sort of thing. Where you'd end up in location X, make a change 25 years earlier, come back to it, and now you're not in the same dimension. You can still hop between the different future dimensions, but you can see the different changes that are happening. Very much reminiscent of Chrono Trigger, but adding in the whole dimensional hopping thing back and forth. I think if oh, Chrono Trigger sequel could actually capture that system, it would be amazing. Can we talk about how shitty Chrono Cross is? Can that be a section of the podcast from now on? <laughs> Every episode has a call. <laughs> and this is the part of the podcast where we fucking shit on Chrono Cross. Well, we that game made you stay in Lynx's body for 70% of the game. And it wasn't even fun. Character driven narrative where they give you 44 characters, ruining the character driven narrative. <laughs> the worst combat system, the worst possible sequel to Chrono Trigger. The worst thing you could do in a sequel like this would just kill off all the old characters and then don't resolve hanging threads and make more. The worst final boss, Masato Kato is a talentless hack. 
<laughs> Tune in next episode where we go over um probably the same points, but about Xenogears. Well, unfortunately, you have to do the Xenogears one on your own because I, I never got into the Xenogears, the PS1. Oh, gorgeous class. game. I owned it. Gorgeous game. I started it like three or four times and then moved on to something more interesting. The best way to describe Xenogears is what if Sword Art Online was way, way worse than it already is. Ooh, wow. Okay. Uh, back to Chrono Cross for a second. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm all for shitting on Chrono Cross. Well, but th- there's a couple things we have to, you know, give it thumbs up for. Name three. Fuck. Because I I, I, I I can name three. It looked beautiful for the time. That's the first. Its music was fucking awesome. That's number two. What's number three? I'll tell you what number. Wah, wah. I'll tell you what number three is. There's an area you go to in the middle of the game, where a whole bunch of time periods have merged into each other in a chaotic mess, and the Enerton, the revive the mm. HPMP restoration machine from the future, is there. You go in it, you come out. It says you feel refreshed, and then your stomach rumbles, but you're still hungry. That is the third cool thing about So Chrono your third cool thing is going to be one of four actual references to the previous game. That's correct. Following Lean's Bell, where they actually show Child, Chrono, Marl, and Luca. Yeah, fuck that whole th- fuck that whole idea that they're ghosts. Um The third reference being the um dinosaur area. Yeah, which led to the dragons. Fuck that. And I guess the fourth reference being Lavos. <laughs> See, here's what I'd do. If I had the rights to Chrono Trigger, this is what I would do, okay? I would I would aim to get a Chrono Cross re-release. Something faithful to the original on a new platform. Because there have been 18 bazillion Chrono Trigger remakes. There have been zero Chrono Cross remakes. Get that out there. Not because I want it, but because if I liked it, I would hate for someone to get the rights to it. Some fat asshole who did a podcast with his other fat friend and then just stomp all over the canon. So get that out there. That's the old canon. Brush it aside. New Chrono Trigger remake that encompasses elements I would like to see in a sequel, but also include it all in the same one game. Shala is not actually sucked into Lavos. She joins you, so goodbye Chrono Cross already, because that was the whole point. And this is what I do. Your character, whether it's Chrono or you get to make your own, their mom is not just some random NPC, but she's Lavos. Because Lavos wants to die. Because it doesn't want to do what it's doing. So it's been helping all the characters get together. And the end of the game, when you fight the Lavos core, it's your mom. Okay. That, that, that might work. Um, number one, my, <laughs> chron- my Chrono Trigger sequel would not have 44 characters. Good idea. Good idea. I like, um, number, I like point one. <laughs> number two, I don't actually think, unlike what I've said in the past... You have to wipe out Chrono Cross from the timeline. You don't. Okay, you're wrong, but go on. No, here's why. Okay. What's the idea of Chrono Cross? Uh, You're in the fucking archipelago of time. Sort of. You're in an archipelago made from a city in the future that got whipped back into the past that then appeared in modern day, but for some reason the characters in Chrono Trigger couldn't interact with it because it didn't exist on the same branch of timeline that they were on and only existed after thanks to the result of their actions, forcing the future that was dark to turn into a bright future so the one wizard from Zeal who was sent to that future could find a way to go back in time and save Shala from getting out of Lavos. So. Yeah. Now you've said way more than you had to. I'm sorry. <laughs> Though, impressive you remembered all those details. I sure as fuck did it. I get very heated when it comes to Chrono Cross. Um, the very nature of the area that Chrono Cross is in yeah. 
means that I can push that shit off to the side. Uh huh. It happened, yeah. but it doesn't affect the rest of the world. And go. Okay. N- number one, when um, that soldier that they ri- from Zeal who survived and made it into present time to make the country that attacked Chrono's country, Dalton. That's where I'd start the game. Because I wouldn't have just it, Chrono, Marl, and Luca just dying off screen. To Pore. It was, the place was called Pore, or Pore, P-O-R-R-E. I don't even Whatever. know how it's pronounced. Um, I would probably, because it'd have to be a sequel, I'd have to recognize all the extra crap that they put in there with the re-releases, one after another. I know, I'd like to ignore it too, but if I had to keep that in there, I'd start the game somewhere around there. And I wouldn't just... Yeah, Colonel Marlo Luca's dead. Fuck you. Colonel could probably take out half of fucking the other country on his own, let alone the magic powers of Marlo and Luca. Not add in... Oh, Frog's actually back in his own time. Still, they, they, they have the fucking fl- flying machine. They can still... Or can they? I forgot one one element of mine, if you don't mind me cutting in real quick. Sure. When you do defeat Lavos, it's in 1999. And because the defeating Lavos, who would be your mom in this case, um, removes the whole time traveling thing. You're stuck. Your characters are there. And their new life is they have to rebuild that future now. A bittersweet ending, but one that absolutely keeps them together. Hmm. But I would also make it so that you can't just go to 1999 anytime, because that's since that's the key to beating Lavos, that way is being blocked. I have a whole system of new villains that are helping Zeal. I have design docs for this. <laughs> and, and that's fine. It, it, ultimately, Chrono Trigger is one of those games that I think scares Square. Because they dip their toe into the pond once. And got nothing but shit for it. A lot of people love Chrono Cross. A lot of people do, but they but a lot of let's just say that for Chrono Trigger, let's say the ratio is ninety percent to ten percent. Love hate. I would say Chrono Cross is probably more of a sixty forty split, if not more towards seventy percent for the hate. Because again, you couldn't do the, do any of the characters justice because you had 44 fucking characters. What were you thinking? Your magic system sucked. Your... Oh, and don't even get me star on the fucking correct ending. Having to get the fucking magic to all go in the right fucking order. There was an easy way to do that. Sure. The easy way is that you wait for... Uh... You wait for the Time Devourer to do the first two, then you do the third, and then you see if it does the fourth. Because if it does the fourth, you can get all the rest before it acts again. Still stupid. Nothing but ass nine. And, of course, look, we kind of have to mention the fact that the correct ending had Shao in fucking Tokyo. Um, people can't see this, but I am flipping off the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that is aimed squarely at square. Anytime your ending is to quote Matt during the God of War playthrough on Best Friends, when the ending or any part of the game is modern day, it's stupid. It's the worst. Except if Kratos got sucked into modern day, I would have laughed because that would have been hilarious. They didn't go to modern day in Dad of War. Okay. Dad, in Dad of Boy, sorry. Uh, thank you for acting. You had me worried there for a no, second. Just, they got sucked into some portal, and then Matt was like, Modern day! Oh, God. Also, You know what game did do that? Lords of Shadow? Uh-huh. Remember the ending to yes. Lords of Shadow? But, but still, it, it's just... Anytime that you're ending to a game, you have to rely on real-world footage. And character dressed up as your character, walking around modern day, you done fucked up. Also, for no reason, Shala's blonde. Yeah, yeah. Any, anyway, we'll get we'll come back to Colonel Cross next time with other things. 
This has been our segment about how Chrono Cross is shit. What did you think of this segment? If you agreed, let us know. If you don't agree, fuck you. Hey, don't flip off our tens of fans. They know what they did. <laughs> God. Well, you know what you did now. It's time for Smash. Yep. Latest Smash Direct, uh, the last one before the game's release came out. We saw three new characters. Ken, an Echo Fighter for Ryu. Uh, Incineroar, the fiery Pokemon who I like. I'm glad Incineroar made it in. And Piranha Plant, the character that the more I think about, the more I like. Dave. You know what? Now that Piranha Plant can move the way it does. Yeah, huh? They basically... If you could name the Piranha Plant, I'd call it Audrey 2. Audrey 2? What's Audrey? You fail at life. I do. What's Audrey? Little Shop of Horrors. Uh Uh-huh. And... Dave, it's been like eight bazillion years since I've seen Little Shop of Horrors. Audrey 2 was the plant. You're going to tell me to to quote Clockwork Orange next? Like, fuck. No. No. Okay. It's been eight million years since I've seen either thing. Audrey 2 was the plant. And the plant plant at the end of the movie started to be able to move around. Uh, So now that that the piranha plant's moving like it is, it reminds me of Audrey 2 from... I re- I'm reminded of that one bullshit bell sprout from the tournament in the Pokemon anime that was beating the shit out of things it shouldn't be beating the shit out of. Okay. Remember it was using martial arts and shit? No, I don't. Anywho, that's this piranha plant. Because it's like this piranha plant has sass and for some reason it's bizarrely insanely strong and can beat the crap out of all the Mario characters. It has two little legs under the pot. It doesn't even need the pot. It just likes having it. <laughs> yeah. It can f- freely fly. So yeah, I mean, we've now seen the intro trailer for Smash Ultimate, which is... The story trailer. The story trailer, which is funny because people have put it side by side with the trailer for the next Avengers movie, and let's just say that they their events line up perfectly. If you have not yet watched Willie's Kirby Lore videos... Oh God. Go watch Kirby Lore. Now, I've known for a while, before even that, that Kirby is a destroyer of intergalactic menaces. Basically, that's all the Kirby game stories. The Kirby game stories are intergalactic Lovecraftian horror uh, is doing something bad, happens to interrupt Kirby's meal, so Kirby destroys the shit out of it. Or messes with his friends. People were mad that in Death Battle, Kirby beat Majin Buu. Fucking... Yeah, but, I don't think Goku beats Kirby. But that that's just the thing, though, is... The, the good thing about Death Battle is they explain why they did things. And Wooly's Kirby lore? Holy crap, you come to understand all that information times a million because it's just like, wait, he did what? And then the way... Against two? And he presents it as though he was reading something out of, like, Dark Souls. I know! Something a lot darker. And it just works, because this is literally the background of Kirby. (laughs) Of course, Kirby is the only one to survive the thing that took out everyone else. Because when you think about it, he's canonically the strongest character there. Now, up until just recently, I had no interest outside of, say, group of friends coming over or whatever else and playing Smash. Yeah. But I'm kind of interested in their single player stuff now, too. I was a little bit disappointed that it kind of copies Dragon Ball Fighter Z in that you're basically fighting, you know, dark versions of your friends. Mm-hmm. But I can see how some of the, the crazy modes they've got going on there could be fun for a bit. It looks better than Subspace Emissary from Brawl, that's for sure. Yeah. But Subspace Emissary, despite what people think, sucked. (laughs) It was the worst. A bad part in an already bad game. I mean, when when I'm watching the trailer, I see all of the master hands coming down. It's like, oh, fuck. Oh, man, this is either going to get bad or really, really kinky. And they're kind of big, so I'm thinking more bad. (laughs) It's like, I see the vertex approaching, and I'm like, okay, 
Are these guys kinky and cool? Or nope, nope, nope. They're killing everyone. Okay. Yeah. No tentacle sex for Carlos. Let's uh, hide in the bunker. So yeah, Smash has a total of seventy-eight characters. Right now. Seventy-seven or seventy-eight with with, with um, the plant. I uh, the plant. <laughs> Buy Smash, get a free plant. Um, that's all I can think about. They give you a free plant for pre-ordering, uh, and the plant can kick ass. Uh, I don't know the exact number because I don't know if those official numbers are counting Echo Fighters or not. I think they are because Echo Fighters should be their own, but the way they're numbered is just the same number as the person they're echoing. It's really confusing, actually. Okay. Um, let's say 75 plus. Fair enough. With over 100 stages, mm-hmm. which the fighting game, game community will only use one. And over 800 music tracks. Crazy. But no Waluigi yet. Well, he's an assist trophy. He was revealed very early as an assist trophy. It still pisses off people who wanted Waluigi as a fighting... You you know who doesn't want to be one of the main fighters? You. Waluigi. Why? Waluigi has zero interest in fighting. What? Why? Exactly. He only ever appears for the sports... And for the parties and the cart racing. You know why? Because Waluigi is only interested in that part of Mushroom Kingdom life. He's like, I'm going to be Luigi's rival in tennis. And they're like, oh, you want to go on an adventure and risk your life over a lava castle? <laughs> Fuck no. But I'm going to go play baseball now. You know, Waluigi, he's an athlete. He's a professional uh... athlete. Waluigi does not give two shits about being a playable character. You know who else is a tr- is a assist trophy? Eh. Shantae. Uh, she's not an assist trophy. She's one of the spirits. What's the difference? Uh, assist trophies can appear in a fight like Pokeballs yeah. and help you. The spirits are little augments you can give your character in specific modes. Oh. Yeah. The fact that she's in the game at all is pretty amazing. Kind of like the Shovel Knight assist trophy. Mm. I hope that she ends up being one of the DLC because I was kind of hoping she was going to be one of the characters, to be honest. A lot of us were. I mean, just for that, I'm thinking about supporting the game. (laughs) Because Shantae's there? I'm a little disappointed Shovel Knight's just an assist trophy, but it's pretty amazing that he's there. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of hope a Microsoft rep makes it in just because Microsoft really wants a character in. They really badly want a character in. Well, and it, it's not that Nintendo and um, Microsoft haven't been playing nice yeah, they have been. on a few things, especially um, giving Sony the old bitch slap for no cross-play. Yep. Hey, man. Uh, I would love to see Master Chief in Smash. Mostly because I've wanted to see Master Chief in Smash for a long time. Partly because it'll piss off Nintendo fans. Uh, another really shitty fan base. Um, but yeah, Smash is looking good. Uh, coming out soon. Next month. December. Yeah. Uh, Pretty much the only game in December, other than some indie Steam games, that I've really seen that I care about. Like, December's a really dead month for new games. I haven't really been looking. But I'm very picky when it comes to games these days. I don't keep my... I'm not really following the trends. I'll see E3... Just out of, more out of curiosity than anything else, but that's about it. Oh, I realize. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else? I mean, I mean, the big one. Well, games coming out this month that I may or may not get. We got the the Pokemon new Pokemon game on Switch. Yeah, let's go Pikachu and Eevee. Uh, we've also got the SNK Anniversary Collection for Switch. Yeah. Which has one of my favorite games of all time, Crystalis. Cool. I just don't know if it's worth it just for Crystalis. How much is the collection? I think it's like 40 bucks. Is it 40 bucks American and therefore $180 Canadian? Or is it 40 bucks Canadian and therefore 3 cents American? I think the latter rather than the former. Gotcha. Just, just ship it from America. Even if the shipping's $38, you're saving $2. <laughs> Something to bring up. Switch having a version 2 coming out next year. Oh, is that official or yep. a rumor? No, that's, Nintendo has said so. Oh? Well, guess I'm glad I waited. 
I'm not. I'm pissed. Is it a better version? Iteratively better? Like PS4 Pro? Or is it just the same Switch, but smaller? <laughs> Which, Which honestly, I'm it. looking at yours, and it's already <laughs> pretty small. Uh, smaller wouldn't be an upgrade in this case. But but hang on, is it a better spec system? That Nintendo has not yet um, given us on. But I'm hoping it's more of the upgrades we saw in the in the PS2 era where it was just a little bit better because they could do things a little bit differently rather than a pro or a 1.5 there was iterative improvement you needed a later PS2 to play games than an nope. early PS2 nope. couldn't play but, but if you had a gen 2 PS2 versus a P, uh, gen 2 PS1 it may have more RAM it may have had a faster CD-ROM drive it, it could have had better specs gotcha that's all actually all in the way oh, oh, if, if that's all it is whatever but, if it's like, oh, Donkey Kong Country, uh, The Wrath of Khan, it will only play on a 2019 Switch and not a 2018 well, Switch. That and, would and be that's something. what I'm worried about. I'm worried about a three, a new 3DS versus the, the original 3DS happening to the Switch. And that would be all levels of bullshit. Well. Because Nintendo's been wanting to do it on, on their portables. Just totally tell fuck off to the early adopters. Because they've been willing to do it there, and because they consider the Switch to be a portable system, I can see them doing that. Something Sony and Microsoft have taken have taken to heart too. Like, well, but even then, yes, the game may run better and may look better on the Pro, but you can still play it on the original. It's it's all the same bullshit, though, honestly. But it isn't because remember, get, again, calling Nintendo out this out on this specifically. Nintendo has games that they released after the, the new 3DS came out that only work on the new 3DS. Yeah, because it, it, it should have been called the 3DS 2 or something to that effect. Because it literally is a, a newer system, right? A yeah. newer spec that they ignored. Even though it was a really good system, I really like the new 3DS. So do I. I've, I've, 3D that actually works. Oh, that was so nice playing both Metroid and finishing Zelda on. Mm -hmm. I stopped playing Zelda because I couldn't handle the 3DS of the original 3DS. And I didn't want to turn it off because boss battles were awesome Yeah, with I, the 3D working. It, the new 3DS really realized the vision and then got abandoned. It's, yeah. it's like the one time one of Nintendo's janky, quirky things worked to my favor and they abandoned it. Though, according to Nintendo, they're, they're still... Supporting the 3DS with new games. They are. They they just don't have 3D in a lot of them. Because a lot of them they want you to run on the 2DS XL. So. What if the next Switch is a combination Switch 3DS? No. Uh, Dave, I'll, I'll you, for people who can't see, when you did that, your eyes turned red. And I think you're crying blood? Like, but in a badass way? <laughs> Dave, wipe your blood eye, please. No, bad. Because not only would that make games portable only, I don't think Nintendo's quite that stupid. I mean, the Switch is supposed to be both a portable and a TV game system. Making it portable only would piss off a lot of people. What if they make the Switch Jumbo, where it's exactly like the Switch, but the screen is 40 inches? I think they call that a TV. Uh, sure, if that helps you. <laughs> yeah, Nintendo gets into the TV market with their Switch. How much would that cost? You know, I saw the Jerry Rig Everything video on the Switch, and the screen is a lot weaker than most phone screens. Scratches yep. a lot more easily. Yep. Which makes the dock design, as you've brought up before, just a really bad idea. Yep. Especially seeing as there's no... There's actually hard surfaces on... As you... When I put my Switch into the dock, like five times I've taken it out, I'm holding it against the, the, the wall furthest from me as I slightly drop it in because there's actually two hard... Um... 
the, the mini shell plastic lips, plastic right? lips. Yeah, and I'm just like, guys, what the fuck were you thinking? I've got a sc- screen protector on there. Yeah, I think I'd actually use one if I got one. Well, I didn't put it on there. The person who owned it before me <laughs> put it on there. So easy piece, but I think I've had it out of there and used it like twice. Um, in is, my doctor's is, office. Is it a touch screen? The switch screen? I don't know. I've never tried pre- pushing on it. Easy, easily looked up. One second. Yes, the switch does have a touch screen. Cool. Uh, while you were away there for a moment, uh, let's look up a couple, couple pieces of information. I guess one of the rumored Blizz um, Diablo projects uh-huh. is a remake of one and two. One and two. Yeah. Because I, I I heard about rumors about the two remake they want to do. I know Blizzard has a new classic games department. Mm-hmm. Which is not only overseeing WoW Classic, but also uh, Warcraft 3. So, makes sense. I, they probably want to remake everything they've done. Except Justice League Task Force. They're probably okay with that one never ma- seeing the light of day again. Yeah. Not a good game. <laughs> they played that on Maddie and Beef's Fight Palace. Go watch Maddie and Beef's Fight Palace, where Slow Beef and his buddy Maddie. Play interesting fighters and beat em ups. Yeah, interesting is a definite word to use. There. Games like Tongue of the Fat Man, Cyber Lip, and more. A lot of old DOS games in there. And janky Neo Geo beat em ups. Yep. So, yeah, one, th- one thing that we have to bring up here, in addition to. Everything else is the PlayStation Classic. Uh, now, we're not going to list the games because you can just go look it up, but the list is underwhelming. To say the least. It does have some games I remember as being kind of PlayStation definers, like Siphon Filter, Final Fantasy VII, uh, Ridge Racer. Where's Gran Turismo, though? That's a Sony flagship that should have easily be on, been on there. Why is Final Fantasy VII the only one? Why does nobody want to re-release Eight anywhere? Like, they couldn't have put a Chocobo's r- Racing or Dungeon in there, too? Like, look. I get why Crash isn't on there. I get why Spyro isn't on there. There are licensing concerns. I'm honestly kind of shocked Final Fantasy VII's on there. I'm not. Mainly because for Final Fantasy VII, I mean, Final Fantasy VII made the PlayStation. It, sure. It, it was the first 3D RPG that everybody went fucking gaga over. Look, I, I may not be as big of a fan of Final Fantasy VII as I was back in the day, but it it was it was the one that Oh. Launched everything. So uh, Final Fantasy VII being on the PlayStation Classic was kind of a no-brainer. Look, I, I, I agree with you. Whatever my feelings about the game now, which are that it's overrated. Not awful, but overrated. I bought a PlayStation for Final Fantasy VII. That's I mean, the reason I got that system. I used, you mentioned the Siphon Filter. I, that's definitely not a game that I ever attributed to the, the PlayStation because I'd never cared. Um, but One surprising omission. They got Metal Gear. Solid, mm-hmm. which is good. They didn't get Symphony of the Night. Now, I know they recently re-released its re-release on the PlayStation 4 with the new translation, mm-hmm. but that original has to have some value in this collection, I think. That, again, that may have been another Konami licensing thing. Mm-hmm. But there are games on here, and I mean, we're probably going to mention each one as we talk here, because there are games here that I'm just like, Really? This is what you're putting? Do you want to read each one and we'll each say great or trash? Battle Arena Toshinden. Battle Arena Toshinden is a good inclusion. Shitty fighting game, but it was kind of... It kind of found its home on the PlayStation. Agreed. Cool Borders 2. I never played it. 
Neither did I. I. I didn't get involved in escape or snowboarding games until SSX Tricky on the PS2. Sure. So I can't say. Destruction Derby. I don't know anything about Destruction Derby at all. I do. Played on PC. I probably an okay inclusion here. Don't sure. know how, how many people would care, though. That's the problem. Final Fantasy VII. Duh, we just mentioned Yeah, that. we just talked about it. Good inclusion. Um, nice that you won't have to switch between three or four different discs. But that also means you can't jank the battle system a bit. That's more of a concern in 8, <laughs> where I beat the Omega weapon with an underleveled party in one hit. There you go. Grand Theft Auto, the original. Man, yeah, but... Really? <sighs> was Grand Theft Auto 3 a PlayStation 2 joint? Or was that still PlayStation 1? I think it was PlayStation 2. It was PlayStation 2. Yeah, so they couldn't have included 3, which is the big title to include. Actually, arguably, the title that everybody and their mother would want is not 3. Vice City. Sure, but th- we're talking... Well, I, I, I thought to myself, did 3 come out on PlayStation 1? And it didn't. No. If 3 came out on PlayStation 1, it should have been here. Because 3 is the first Grand Theft Auto that ushered in the modern yes, Grand Theft Auto agreed. formula. Agreed. Intelligent Cube. I remember this was a big deal for Sony at the time. I don't remember anything about it, but I remember the name. I don't even remember the name, so I'm just going to say, eh. Jumping Flash. I heard about Jumping Flash as well. Again, I don't know anything about it. I mean, you should be going with tiles that everybody knew. Okay, but Dave, we're not everybody. We don't know every pilot in the world. It's possible that everyone else on the planet is excited and we're just crusty and old. Could be. Metal Gear Solid. Good choice. Mr. Driller. Uh, I know the title. I just... I never played wh- it yet. Why is it on the list? Mm-hmm. This made it in over Final Fantasy Tactics? Like... Oddworld... Or Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Yeah, I see. I see where that one's there. That's not my favorite genre of game, the kind of uh, out of this world 2D adventure. Yeah. But uh, still a very iconic PlayStation franchise. Rayman. Kind of a no brainer. A good choice, honestly. Resident Evil Director's Cut. Again, kind of a no brainer. The first Resident Evil, they really should have included two. But this but, is but this the, is this is the director's cut, and the remake is coming. So I mean, still, I mean, it is iconic for the system. I guess it's it's actually nice they're giving the director's cut, which had the original there. Sure. Um, this one surprised me. Revelations Persona. Yeah, they put the first Persona, which yeah, I get why it's there. But you know what else was on PlayStation 1? A much better game by the name of Persona 2, which <laughs> really should have been the one that got in. Um, Ridge Racer. Again, makes sense. Yeah, but Gran Turismo would have also made sense, and it wasn't there. Um, this one kind of surprised me. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. The puzzle game. Yeah, they put the puzzle game in, not Pocket Fighter. Like, the Pocket... If you Pocket Fighter should have been there, not Puzzle Fighter. Uh, honestly, put both. Yeah. Siphon Filter. Siphon Filter was one of those, uh, they was made famous by, like, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. This is kind of a Splinter Cell style game. And I do remember hearing a lot about Siphon Filter and seeing screens. Not really my cup of tea, but I get why it's here. Same. This one makes complete sense. Tekken 3. Absolutely. One of the, Tekken 3, I think, is one of the highest grossing PlayStation games of all time. Probably the first good Tekken game. Uh, No, that's not fair. Tekken 2 was pretty good as well, but... I'll take your word for that. Tekken 3 changed a lot when it came to console fighters. It it really deserves to be here. Next one, again, makes sense. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six. Yeah, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six makes sense. Shitty, shitty game, but it makes sense. It's a Tom Clancy game. Of course it sucks. And... This one's kind of a no-brainer, too. Twisted Metal. Yep. Though, arguably, they should have put Twisted Metal 2 on here, not the original. Sure, I would agree with that. Because 2 was way better in every way. Or both, although there is a space concern. These yeah. aren't these are CD games, not, not... These aren't games where you can fit the whole library of the system on two floppies, right? Like Pretty much. And 
Another no-brainer, Wild Arms. Yeah, well, a Wild Arms surprised me. Because I don't think it's a no-brainer. I think it's a pleasant surprise. I think I want... if In my dream list, yeah, it's the, yeah. it's, Wild Arms is there, but it never makes it. But it did. Well, and, and I guess that's is I'm looking at it as far as my interest as well as a no-brainer. Wild Arms was one of those... Then again... Where's my Breath of Fire 3? Yeah, Breath of Fire 3 could have been there very easily. Uh, uh, I would have pulled out Jumping Flash and put Breath of Fire 3. Final Fantasy Tactics, I would argue, a case for, or Final Fantasy 8. Um, again, assuming they couldn't get the Crash or Spyro games, but if they could, you know what game they could have fought for is Crash Team Racing. That would have been nice. That really would have been nice. I'm still holding out for a freaking um, remake. Of Crash Team Racing? Yeah, because Crash Team Racing was a fantastic racing game. I think more so than any of the other Crash Naughty Dog games, Crash Team Racing is the ones where the original mechanics have to work. Yeah. And so I would have rather have seen it as part of this thing. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, kind of a disappointing list, honestly. Uh, now, I mean, granted, this is coming from... RPG players and everything else. Like, and the one guy who liked Air Gates. <laughs> yes, yes. God bless the ring. Ear, ear, ear. I love that game. Tifa. Tifa, the who actually wasn't the best character in the game, but her she was easily the second best and by far the easiest to use. Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, um... I mean, I, I look at, at the library I owned for PlayStation 1, and while being very, very RPG-centric, there are so many classics in there, like Breath of Fire 3, like your Lunar Games. All the Lunar Games now, could have been here! And here's why that wasn't possible. Working Designs no longer exists, and the companies that have since done retranslations of the original versions of the games now hold the rights for those translations. So, unfortunately, a Lunar 1 and a Lunar 2 for PlayStation 1 would not have been possible. Hey, Kiki Poe and I were having a conversation the other day, and I'm, it started when I asked a question. That's never good. So, Galleon was a pervert, right? Yes. Because he, like, he wanted to restore Althena, who was reborn as Luna. Yep. But at no point did he need to dress up Luna, who was still a teenager at the time, in what could best be described as a BDSM string outfit. Pretty much. Because... And he, al he, al he also wanted her as in lover. Because was Galleon like... Hmm, yes, I'm going to turn Luna into into the goddess Althena once more. And while I'm at it, goddamn, this 16-year-old's got a rockin' bod. Gotta see some underboob. Pretty much. Did you like my galleon voice? I did. If I still, had, if I still had my galleon punching puppet, I would have brought it out. I still have my galleon punching puppet. <laughs> yeah, you... <laughs> That went for a nice chunk of change. Yep. Yeah, you know, I never use it. Maybe I should sell it. Anyway, yeah, Galleon Pervert under boob great. So I mean, yeah, we we had games like the Lunar series. There's just so many classics. It, it's it's underwhelming what we got, but for us, they kind of chose a general group of games rather than trying to focus on any one genre i mean they've already got final fantasy 7 and wild arms on there for rpgs oh and persona revelations which i think is the bigger surprise of the three maybe they should have made a playstation rpg classic and a playstation fighting game classic they could have yeah they absolutely could have but getting some of the licensing for some of these games would have been hard because like game the tales License for Tales of Destiny 1 and 2 would be a bitch. Um, to clarify, we mean Tales of Destiny and Tales of Eternia, which got 
translated here as Tales of Destiny 2, not to be confused with the actual Tales of Destiny 2, which was a PlayStation 2 game, and a true sequel to Tales of Destiny. It's confusing. I mean, you could have all three Final Fantasies on here. Yeah. You could have put Grandy on here. Yeah, but they wanted to put good games. Hey! The fuck? The original Grandia has not aged well. To fuck you say? I do say. Do you remember the original Grandia? I played it last week. Yeah, and you hated it. No, I still love that game. Janky movement. A far too easy combat system. I don't think in the disc 2 I ever took more than one point of damage from an attack. Including sure. the final boss. Sure. I don't believe that. At all. No, if we're talking Grandia 3, no, the second half of that game, then again, I was 20 levels below what I should have been, but still. No, Grandia 1 is is not good. I mean, I'm looking forward to the re- remake. There's a remake of Grandia 1? Yeah. Does that mean we're finally going to get a true sequel to Grandia 1 starring Sue? Who was my favorite character and they got sidelined! I guess they could do do further sequels now, as long as we basically ignore Grandia 3 and Grandia Extreme. Grandia 3 was not bad. What are you talking about? It was marginal at best. The worst quality of that game is that it kind of ended a little too quick. Grandia Extreme is trash. I'll, I'll agree with you there. And I'm not a big fan of 2, although I know you liked it. Great music in 2, though. Holy shit. Well, I, I think think the music was what makes me think so highly of it. It definitely wasn't the main character. Grandia really... I'm going to give it nods for this, especially Grandia 2 onward. Someone decided, you know what, what fantasy RPGs have been missing? A fucking metal soundtrack. <laughs> Get that synth electric guitar out, and let's make a rock and battle theme. Like, you, you can say that Grandia 1 has not aged well, and guess what? It's true. I may still have liked what I was just kind of peeling around with it, but I think what I still remember so much of Grandia 1 is the fact that, you know, it, it was, you got behind the adventure that your characters were going through the when the shit hit the fan you were thanks to the animation sequences they had in there and everything else and the sometimes horrendous dub that was in there don't i'm not defending that at all sometimes the lines were done okay other times it was like what the fuck did you just say but i had fun with grandia one it was an it was a nice adventure game so for for me grandia one will always be better than, than its sequels i just tasted grandia one in my mouth a little bit and i threw up a little oh, come on <laughs> there were way worse games in grandia one you're not wrong there were and, way worse and, games in grandia and one at the time grandia was groundbreaking on a number of levels sure uh it was a pretty good port of the saturn game and because of weird ram differences People thought it was going to be impossible to pull off on PlayStation, but it worked. Uh, It's kind of weird. Even though PlayStation was more advanced than Saturn, Saturn had a weird variety of RAM caches that let Mm. it do certain things way better, like 2D games and whatever the fuck wonders they made Grandia work with. (laughs) So, yeah, I... I'm glad that they're doing a remake. I mean, they're, they're remastering the videos and... I know what game is missing from this collection. What? Legend of Dragoon. Yeah, that would be a nice one on there. But again, we're turning it into a PlayStation Classic RPG edition. Ba, 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 I'm sorry. I mean, for, okay, if it was an RPG collection, then you'd have to have um, the Suikoden games. One mm-hmm. or two. Yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics 8 and 9. You might as well throw in freaking um, Xenogears and Wild Arms 2. No, Wild Arms 1 is objectively the only good Wild Arms game. I like... In- including the remake. I like 3. 3 is okay. But, I will say, the introduction of 3's battle system and overworld stuff into 1 
is what screwed the, screwed the remake. Oh yeah, like I've played a bunch of the Wild Iron ga- games, and all of them I thought to myself, "This is okay," but except for two, I hated two. Uh, um, most of them I was like, "This is okay," but it's not one. It didn't have Cecilia doing her little jig when she won. Um, and then you might as well throw in, like, Legend of Lagaya. Oh, man, I would have loved Legend of Lagaya. I have a friend who nearly punched the wall over that game. <laughs> a friend who did not play RPGs. His first major RPG, Legend of Lagaya. Objectively one of the toughest RPGs if you don't get the game-breaking point card. Every boss has a party-killing attack. I'm going to guess who that is off the podcast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you could turn this into an RPG system so easily. You could. I. That's not what they were going for. But no. they could have. They, 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 they could have done... They could have put the PlayStation port of Doom. The PlayStation port of Doom does some rather interesting things. It's got some <sighs> unique levels. It's got some colored lighting. A new ambient soundtrack. That would have been a neat 3D shooter to put in there. Yeah... But again, now we're messing with space. This is true. This is true. We're messing I'm pretty with space. sure this whole thing fits on a RAM card in the system, because it's probably not a hard drive. What are, what are you saying that we can't fit games that are, like, thousands of times larger than the even the biggest SNES game? What are you talking about? There was another... Um, there, there is n- another. There is another. There was another classic-style... Um, Video game console. Was announced. it the Devolved for Digital Classic? Because that ended up being a uh, that ended up getting Nina Struthers killed again. Because there's the the Commodore sixty four one that's coming out. The Intellivision Amico by Tommy Tallarico, a console that I legitimately love the idea behind. Where you can, it comes with two touchscreen controllers, and then and you can download an app to make your phone an Intellivision controller. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of that. That should be a game where Point Blank could be rebooted. Uh, there's rumors of an N64 classic console. It's gonna happen. We don't of even. Of course it is. Of course it's gonna happen. It's got Mario 64. It's gonna have Zelda, uh, Ocarina of Time, but not Majora's Mask. Of course not. <laughs> Even well, though it should, it's the superior one. Bite uh, your tongue. That done. game is hot garbage. I'm sorry you can't handle a, the concept of a clock, Dave, okay? Fuck There's a you. clock. In, did you also look at Mario? Did you play Mario Brothers and you look at the timer in the corner and went, This is bullshit, worst game ever? No. Pretty sure you did. No, I didn't. At the end of Super Metroid, you're like, what do you mean I only got three minutes to escape? I want to explore the area. Dead. Really? <laughs> Anytime a timer shows up, Dave just loses his mind. I, 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 I like your um, idea of what my hide version <laughs> Oh, God. Be. If you don't like redoing things, don't ever play Cave Story or Undertale. But I have. Oh. And they were. I was just fine with them. I see. I just hate when the system's bad. So, can we do a whole spoiler cast about Undertale? Not yet, because I'm not done all the playthroughs. Are you doing the genocide ending? I'm not saying. Okay. Um, other than that, there is one other one that has been rumored. Yeah! That's a Dreamcast classic. Oh, uh, that should be easy. There are like five good games, so... <laughs> hey! Let's see, um... Soul Calibur, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 will be nice and count those as one. Burning Rangers, Fantasy Star Online, which you can't really do in this kind of file format, and literally nothing else. I can think of a couple other fighters. Uh, uh, what was the Rival School sequel? Uh, uh, Project Justice. Project Justice, I guess. How about that one we always played in arcades? Project Justice? Capcom mm. versus SNK? Mm. Two, there was a Dreamcast version of that game. I know there was. But no, we I'm, played I'm, it on PlayStation It was too. a mech one, actually. Tech Romancer? There we go. Tech Romancer. And it's Bullshit Infinites? <laughs> and it's Secret Final Boss for the main character, which ended up being a disappointment? I didn't know that, but yes. Tech I discovered Romancer. it in arcades. I was like, <gasps> and it ended up being bullshit. Okay. 
So maybe there would be um, some interesting choices on it. You know what you could do? You could release that as a disc for another system and it would be a better idea. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding. Look, I love my Dreamcast, but come on now. <laughs> Ouch. Next, we're going to have the Atari Jaguar Classic with Tempest 2000, Alien vs. Predator, and another Tempest 2000. Don't forget that really bad Doom port. It wasn't a bad Doom port, it just didn't have music. So it was a bad Doom port. Come on, Doom with no music? Okay, so here are the games in that. Tempest 2000... <laughs> <laughs> Alien vs. Predator, a second copy of Tempest 2000, and a ROM hack of Doom with music in it. Okay, this is exciting. Okay, so these are our Jaguar Classic games, and literally no other games. <laughs> oh, we're starting to... I, I think an actual classic version of, like, the ne that was it. Neo Geo Classic. They've released little mini consoles like that that can also hook up to your TV. But the, the, this is supposed to be a big one. Oh, because that little portable Neo Geo one had like 11 billion games on it. Did it? Arguably a much better value than the old NES, the NES or SNES Classic. Because it had a ton of games on that thing. Huh. It had like 30 or 40 games. It was crazy. Which is interesting because the PC hardware to actually run Neo Geo games properly mm -hmm. you need a decent system to do it 16-bit system with a ton of ram requirements and large cartridges that neo geo x the little portable also comes with expandable memory and you can load roms of more games and it'll run off that thing huh that was a value that thing okay um plus there aren't too many bad neo geo games look the NES and the SNES are the number one and two consoles of all time. You can argue what order that is. I'd argue the SNES is number one. Some people would argue the NES is number one. But they're number one and two. Mm -hmm. The Neo Geo is not up there, but I'll argue, if you randomly grab an NES game off a wall that has all the NES games, there's a 90% chance you grabbed a piece of garbage. On a Neo Geo, I'm pretty sure whatever game you grab, you can have fun with friends right there. Because they're all beat 'em ups shoot 'em ups or other multiplayer couch co-op games. The Neo Geo would have been a... Like, if we were the age we are now looking for couch co-op games in the era of the Neo Geo, that would have been our fucking dream. Yep. No, you're absolutely correct. And I don't know if the NES library is quite 90% chance, but we're arguing semantics at this point. The Virtual Boy classic oh, fuck comes off. with such classic games like... Teleroboxer, and that's it. They don't like lawsuits. I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> Today's lawsuit mad days, a uh, virtual classic would not be a good idea. I've seen Virtual Boy emulators that look decent, and that can let you play in black and white instead of in um, eye-melting red. Black and red. honestly, the 3DS could have done Virtual Boy games, no problem. Well, probably. Uh, some of there, there were like two good Virtual Boy games. The Wario game on it was actually really good, and uh, Teleroboxer literally was a good robot punch out clone, and that was literally it. Those are the top two games of that system. Of like what six games it had? Uh, like twelve, but yeah, <laughs> not a lot of games. Tiger handheld games classic. Featuring such classics like Symphony of the Night, which was a real thing. I owned Mega Man 2. I had and Ninja Gaiden. I had Double Dragon. Uh, and yeah, I borrowed that and finished that. I had Generic Pinball. Oh my god. How do we put up with that as kids? Here's why. As much as I agree with James Rolfe's hate for Tiger Games, they weren't all bad. Solid State games have been like that have been done before. The Game & Watch games, arguably, yeah. though arguably way better. If we want to be real technical, pinball machines are Solid State games. So, I mean, they're a set play field that you manipulate a, a couple of little elements on. They're, they're technically exactly like those games. So, I mean, they're fine. The Tiger games weren't all bad. Granted... None of them holds a candle to even, like, some of the worst Game Boy games. 
But yeah. still. We've come a long way. We have. There's a reason why Tiger games are no longer made. That's right. <laughs> because they are no longer profitable. No. Nope. Libertarian Nightmare of 2018. <laughs> They've moved on to mobile. And not that mobile platform. The, to bring it back around, mobile's a fine platform for gaming. The problem is capitalism doing the freemium shit. Yeah. I think we're done. I think that's, that's good enough. Okay, bye. Um, pardon? Oh, right. Our outro. Um, I don't know. My heart's not in the outro today. My heart's not in paying you your five cents. Get the fucking outro going. Go to our website, I guess. It's animerive.xyz. It's home of Carl and Dave Anime Rave. The best anime review show on the internet. And this podcast as well. Tune in next time, everyone. Oh.